Stay all day. 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 Stay We take all of those elements and we put them together in one bundle. We make a philosophy out of this. There's a brand, it's a business, there's a hardcover book that you can get at workingyourgamebook.com. This whole show, this is a daily show. Every day we are giving you a new masterclass from within this philosophy that is called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. If this is your first time listening to the show, let me explain to you that. There have been 1,600 of these master classes published, so you need to get access to all of them. I suggest while you're listening to me right now on your phone, I know you got it with you, go to workonyourgameu.com. Workonyourgameu, as in university.com. Go there right now so that you can get access to every master class I've ever done ever while you listen to this one right now. Okay, so I'm giving you the current and I'm telling you that you need to go back and get all the evergreen content that we made in the past. All that being said, today's topic is how to get better at public speaking. I think I'm qualified for this topic. Now, I've asked discuss this, getting better at public speaking back in master class number 156 back in 2016. I think it's time for an update. I've learned some new things. I got some new things that I want to share with you. And there are some people who have asked me about this recently, about you know, getting better at just whether that be doing a, whether you're talking on video, whether you're appearing on somebody's show, let's say you get on somebody's YouTube show or you're on the radio, you go on TV, you're on somebody's podcast, whatever it is that you're doing, you just want to get better at speaking out loud. Whether maybe you're just speaking at work, maybe you're speaking to a room full of people, maybe you want to approach a, a girl or a guy at the mall and you just get nervous when a person's looking at you and you're talking to them. Understand something about public speaking. Public speaking is a universally needed skill that will improve anyone's future prospects because it is based on communication. It is a very important skill. This is a skill that you want to have in place all the time. Masterclass number 1028. I talked about the skills that you will need for the future. One of them is your ability to communicate, speak in public. And when I say public speaking, let me be clear what I mean. Public speaking means you talking to an audience of at least two other people. Now, if you're talking to one person, that's a conversation. If you're talking to two people or more, that is public speaking. All right, so if you have two kids and you sit your two kids down at, at the living room co couch and you start talking to them, that is public speaking. All right, if you do a live stream and there's two people watching your live stream, that is public speaking. If you go give a speech somewhere and there's two people in the room or more, that is public speaking. All right, so I want to make sure I'm being clear what I mean when I say public speaking. It does not mean you have to be in front of an audience of thousands or that you have to be some big name influencer or anything like that. Anytime you have an audience, which is at least two people, if there's one person in a conversation, if it's two people, that is public speaking. This is a skill that will make you better no matter what you do. You could be an athlete, public speaking will make you better because you do media appearances, you might have to talk to the team, you might have to talk to your own teammates, you have to talk to the team before they sign you to a contract. If you have a good game, there's going to be an interview after the game, you need to be better at public speaking. There's going to be a camera, you might be thousands of people watching that, you need to be better at public speaking. If you're going to be a singer or a rapper, or any type of artist or entertainer, whatever it is that you create, whatever your art is, people are going to ask you about your art. You're going to need to talk about your art. You're going to need to answer questions about your art. You're going to need to tell people, explain to people what the art is so that they know what it is they're buying or selling, not selling, or signing up for or consuming. Whether it's music, whether it's your artwork, whether it's your t-shirts, whatever it is, you need to be able to explain to people what it is that they're getting. And if you can't do that, then people are not going to buy into it because they have no idea who you are. So that is where you're going to need public speaking. If you happen to be an author or in any type of influencer or a person who is a, a thought leader, you want to write books or you want to... Uh, make you want to write be a journalist for articles you want to be a newspaper reporter whatever that is you're going to need to public speak because you need to, going to need to explain what you've talked about hey i wrote a book it's 250 pages all right nobody's going to just buy your 250 page book without hearing you talk first because they want to get some idea what the book is about what you are about and how you talk because if they don't like how you talk they're probably not going to like how you write so they're not going to buy your book if they don't like listening to you talk so anybody who's listening to me talk and you've been listening to me every day for a long time, I suggest you go to workonyourgamebook.com. If you like how I talk, you will love how I write. But if you don't like how I talk, you maybe you'll like the book too. So go get it too. 
But anyway, you get the point that I'm making here. Anything that you do in life, if you are good at it and you want people to know that you're good at it, you are going to need to speak in public. If you want to get a job somewhere, if you want to, if you're a coach, if you're an administrative assistant, if you're a cook, if you're a chef, if you're a hostess, if you're a waiter or a waitress, if you're a valet person, if you want to get a job, you're probably going to have to go through a job interview. At a job interview, you're probably going to be talking to at least two other people who are going to be asking you questions and evaluating your answers while they are evaluating you as a person. If you are uncomfortable speaking in public, which is to at least two people, how are you going to get hired for a job? Trick question. You won't get hired for a job. All right, you'll try, but you will fail to get hired for a job if you are not good at public speaking. So anything that you do in life, the better you are at public speaking, the better you will be at that thing, or at least the more opportunities you will get to do that thing and prove that you are actually good at that thing, whatever that thing happens to be. So that's why the skill of public speaking is so important for all of us. If you cannot communicate your thoughts, ideas, and feelings, ladies and gentlemen, you will not be able to connect with anyone. You will not be able to influence or persuade anyone. A skilled public speaker also communicates confidence and competence, and that will probably help your cause at whatever you got going on in life. Those are the reasons why you need to get better at public speaking. And today, I'm going to explain to you what you need to do to get better at public speaking. Now, let's get into it. point number one. The topic, once again, is how to get better at public speaking. First thing you got to do is speak. Yes, and this is not a trick point. <laughs> this is a real point. The first thing you got to do to get better at public speaking is you must practice your skill of speaking. Let me tell you one reason why I've become really good at public speaking, why I'm a polished, if I may say so myself, public speaker, why I'm comfortable speaking in front of an audience of 20 people, three people, or 10,000 people. The reason that I, one reason that I've become really good at it is because how often do I practice speaking? How often does the show come out? And if you follow me on social media, how often am I talking in my social media stories? How often do I put videos up on YouTube? Every day I am speaking publicly. Even if I'm just speaking to a phone or speaking into a microphone, I know there are hundreds and thousands of people who are going to be listening to what I'm saying. So I have the experience of speaking. The 10,000 hours rule when it comes to speaking, I got it in. So talk to your camera. You wanna get better at speaking, talk to your camera. Put the camera on, on your phone, Use your Instagram stories or your Facebook stories, YouTube stories, Snapchat stories, every platform has stories. So whatever the story is, do that. Do a live stream every single day if that's what you wanna do. Turn the video camera on on your phone, not the online streaming camera, just the regular camera. Put it on you, uh, prop it up somewhere so you got the selfie camera on, make it start recording and just start talking. It doesn't matter what you talk about. Tell your life story, talk, about, talk to yourself, talk about your day. Make it your, your diary. Your diary, has anybody done this? Maybe somebody's probably already doing this. Instead of writing your diary or your journal down on paper, how about every single day you just record a video talking about how you feel, how your day was, what happened in the day, what you liked about the day, what you didn't like about the day. Record that on video every single day, then save it to you know the cloud, whether you got Amazon Cloud Storage, Google, Google Drive, uh, iCloud, whatever you got, save it to the cloud, and every single day just record it. And over the years, let's say over the next five years, wouldn't it be fascinating to go back and just look at your videos of you talking about your day every single day? Keep it organized, right? Keep the dates right. So you can go back and talk about your day every single day over the years, and you'll be able to go back and look at that. Start doing that every single day. That will help your speaking skill because you get comfortable just talking. A lot of people are just uncomfortable speaking, period. This is uncomfortable talking. Doesn't matter who they're talking to. They can be talking to one person and they're uncomfortable. Some people are uncomfortable writing a, a DM to a person that they don't even know, let alone speaking to an audience of people who've never heard of them before and is expecting to get something. Start a podcast and just make it for yourself. Don't even put it out. Just record it and don't release it. Just put it out and listen to your own episodes. To get better at speaking, ladies and gentlemen, you need practice, which means you must get comfortable with your own voice, personally. I have recorded probably of 7,000 plus videos I have published to the internet, I would say on YouTube, let's say rather, at least 5,000 of those I'm speaking on the video. There's some of them I wasn't speaking, but 5,000 of them I'm speaking on it. All these master classes that have come out, all my audio books that I post, thousands of live streams that I've done, and then all the in-person communication, whether that's talking to one person, 20 people, or uh, speaking speeches and things like that, I have more than 10,000 hours in when it comes to mastering the skill of speaking in public. It doesn't mean that I think I am perfect. It doesn't mean that everything I say is just amazing. 
I think most of it is. But the point is, I have over 10,000 hours of experience when it comes to speaking in public. I'm comfortable with my own voice. I'm comfortable with what I'm saying. I'm comfortable with presenting myself to other people through my voice. And that's one reason that I've gotten good at public speaking and I can talk to people about how to do it. You gotta get out there and just do it. Again, turn your cam selfie camera on on your phone and just talk to yourself for five minutes every day. Just make it a five minute video journal every day. That's a great idea. Those of you who don't like writing things down or you forget, you can turn the selfie camera on. You can be laying in bed right before you go to sleep. Put the little the, the light on so you got the flash going, so you got the light right. And just talk about your day for five minutes, whatever you wanna talk about, turn it off, save it to the cloud, and then every day you're gonna have a backup of years and years of uh, you just video journal your entire life every single day. Simple enough, anybody can do that. Point number two. Today's topic is how to get better at public speaking. Here's a tactic that can help you. I just gave you one tactic, I'm gonna give you another tactic. But the first one was not really a tactic, it's more of a strategy because we all talk every single day. But here's a tactic, something that you don't naturally do every day, but you can start doing this and it will help your public speaking skills. Read out loud. Read out loud. Now this is a really great tactic for you to use because when you read out loud, first of all, you get to practice speaking because you're you already have the words supplied to you. So unlike that five minute journal idea I gave you on point number one, or telling you to go live stream or start a podcast for yourself or a YouTube channel, on those you're gonna have to figure out what to say. Even though you know how to turn the camera on, you still gotta figure out what, what's the material gonna be? What am I gonna talk about? If you were to read out loud, the material is already supplied for you. All you gotta do is just read it. So as long as you are capable of reading, now if you don't know how to read, then there are probably classes somewhere that you can take online that will teach you that. I'm not qualified to teach that. But as long as you know how to read, all you gotta do is read it out loud. You don't have to be the most polished reader. You can read slow, you can read fast, you can have a stutter, whatever it is, just read out loud. This is great practice, because it allows you to practice speaking, the material is already supplied to you, and if you're reading somebody else's writing, or let's just assume you're reading what somebody else wrote, you are learning grammar, you're learning sentence structure, all at the same time. So read something that you actually like. All right, so whatever you've read that you actually like. So anything that is published out there into the world, the good stuff usually is very well written, okay? Published stuff is usually well written. So whatever your favorite book is, go read that book out loud. Read a page or two from that book out loud every single day. Read five minutes worth that on your selfie camera, record yourself doing this every single day. So then you can watch yourself read it. You can learn where you have some verbal tics. You can learn where you start to get nervous. You can learn where you're slipping up. You can get better at looking at the camera, which is your audience, while you're reading. So you could be reading something, but still looking at the audience. If you notice from, for example, uh, politicians, when they give speeches, often they have a podium and they have notes in front of them and they're looking at the notes and they're kind of reading off the notes or they're using the notes as their guide for the speech. But at the same time, they keep looking up, right? They're looking at the audience. They're scanning the audience and making sure they're making eye contact with their audience while they're actually using notes and sometimes even reading directly from the notes. Now they have practice. I mean, it's not like they just rolled out of bed and did that. They have practice doing it, but this goes back to point number one. They have practice speaking. One thing politicians are really good at is speaking. I've never seen a politician, at least a successful one, one that's ever won an election who wasn't good at speaking. Because to win an election, you gotta be able to sway an audience. And you can't sway an audience with your detailed plans and policies because most people don't read. But people will tune in and listen to you talk. Uh, they will come and listen to what you got to say. They will ask you a question and see what your answer is. They will come to the city council meeting and see what you're going to talk about. They will tune into the debates and listen to you go back and forth with your opponent. So you got to be polished as a speaker to win an election in the political world. All politicians are really good speakers. So if you watch one of them or you know a politician, ask them how did they get good at speaking and they'll give you some ideas. Another idea, any of you happen to be in school, is to sign up for a debate class. And this one wasn't one of my points, but now that I'm on the subject, I'm talking about, I'm thinking about it rather, I'll mention that. I would, that's something that I would do. If I went back to college, I would sign up for a debate class. Not because I don't think I'm pretty good at debating already, but in a debate class, I would assume, any of you who's ever taken one, you can, you can check me on this, that in a debate class, not only do you learn how to, obviously you gotta speak when you're in a debate class, but you learn how to, uh, make an argument. You learn how to break down an opponent's argument. You learn how to see both sides of an argument because I would assume that in training for debate, 
that you may not even know what side of an argument you're going to have to be on. They may say, all right, legalizing marijuana. You might be a, a ample, you might be a big time weed smoker, but in class, they say, all right, you got to argue against the legalization of marijuana and you got to be able to formulate a strong argument against the legalization of marijuana, not because you're going to have to argue that somewhere in public, but because when you know every point, every strong point that your opponent can make, then you know how to break down every point that they have. So this is something that I would assume, again, that you will learn in a debate class. Any of you who's ever taken a debate class, you can please write me, dre at dreallday.com and let me know if I got that right. But that's the kind of thing that any of you who's in school, you should definitely take advantage of a debate class because that is the type of skill that you can use in all of life. That is something that you should study in college. If you could take an elective for debate, I would absolutely suggest you do it. But anyway, back to what I'm talking about here, which is reading out loud. The published word, again, the good stuff, your favorite book, your favorite author, your favorite blog. If there's an Instagrammer that you like and they write like, you know, these deep, uh, thoughtful captions, read their caption out loud to yourself. It doesn't have to be to anybody else. Read it out loud. It's probably well written. It makes you feel good. You like it. You're a fan of that person anyway. Read it out loud. I guarantee you it will help your speaking skill to read it out loud. And you, again, you can do this in private. It'll make you a better speaker. It'll make you a better reader. And it will boost your confidence in both speaking and reading. And here's another bonus. There's a lot of bonuses to doing this. Mimicking well-written and well-organized words will help you do the exact same thing. That means when you speak, your words will be more well-written. Your thoughts will be more better organized simply because you are mimicking and learning from. You're practicing kind of at the feet of people who know how to organize words in a, you know, a way that makes sense. They know how to put together, they understand sentence structure, which a lot of people do not understand. These things that we have as humans called mirror neurons, whenever we're looking at what someone else is doing, a little bit of their ability rubs off on us when it's our time to do our thing. Doesn't mean we can become them. Doesn't mean if you watch a LeBron James basketball video, you're gonna be LeBron. But if you watch his videos enough, when you get on the court, some things that he does, or maybe some things that you assume is going on in his mind, they will be going on in your mind, or you'll at least try to do those similar things simply because that's the way the human, the human animal works. When we watch other people do things, a little bit of what we saw them do, we make ourselves capable of doing just by observation. Uh, this is just the way that it works as human beings. So their skill can influence your skill. So when you read out loud, at least read something that you enjoy or somebody who actually knows how to write. Point number three. If you need suggestions, go to dreallday.com slash read. I have an entire reading list there. Any book on that list is a well-written book. Pick one, start reading. Point number three, today's topic once again, is how to get better at public speaking. Number three, slow down. Now I'm saying that as a person, when I'm on this show, sometimes I talk maybe a little bit fast. I don't, I don't think I talk super fast. Sometimes I go a little bit fast. But when I'm on a stage giving a speech, if any of you has ever uh, seen a video of one of my live speeches like a professional speech keynote a ted talk things like that i talk a lot more slowly we as human beings tend to rush through saying things sometimes we do this because we just talk fast sometimes we do it because we're excited about a point and we just want to get everything out while it's fresh on our brains and sometimes we rush through saying things because we are nervous or afraid or in whatever way unbalanced so Here's how you disrupt that possibility. You slow down, consciously, purposely you slow down. When you slow down as a speaker, your speech becomes more even, it's more steady, you as a person is more are more grounded, and when you slow down while you're giving a speech or while you're doing any type of speaking to anybody, any audience, you are now taking more time from your audience which they will happily give to you and let you keep taking it as long as you occupy that time. I've never heard audience feedback of someone saying, this person spoke too slow. I wish he would have just said everything faster and gotten it all out at one time. I have heard people complain that someone was talking too fast because they couldn't really keep up or understand everything that was being said. I've seen speakers criticized for talking too fast because they will make a point and while the audience is processing what they just said, the speaker goes on and makes their next statement and the audience either misses the next statement because they're still processing the previous one or they never process the previous statement because they have to keep listening to catch the next one. That's why slowing down when you speak allows people more time to absorb what you are saying. 
especially if you are saying something in public that is not something that most of the people there are gonna go back and listen to again. They only got that one time to consume it. You wanna speak more slowly so that people can process everything that you said. So that every thought gets processed so that they're not missing anything. There's no knowledge gaps in what they're saying or perception gaps of what you actually said. So while on this show, I can speak a little bit faster because this is recorded and you can listen to it over and over and over again anytime that you want. All you members that work in your game university, you can listen to it as much as you want to and record it and rewind it. it this, this format, this platform is designed for that. When I'm speaking to someone in person, however, something that may, it may be being recorded, but I know most of the people in the audience are not gonna go watch the recording and say, oh, what did he say at this point? What did he say there? No, they're taking notes right there on the spot. So they're gonna hear whatever they hear and it's over. I speak more slow. I pace myself out. If I make a joke, I give people time to laugh. If I'm telling a story, I slow down in the story when I get to certain points. So when I get to the climax and when I get to a cliffhanger, I slow down. I might walk across the stage. I might just make eye contact with some people in the audience and they're all giving me their attention because they're waiting for the rest of the story. That's how you speak when you're speaking in public, slowing down. Another thing that slowing down does, it allows you some additional time to remember what the hell you were about to say, just in case you forgot. That happens sometimes. You might forget what you were gonna say, but when you talk more slowly, you have more time to remember what it was. And another thing is, anytime that you have to give a speech and there's a certain amount of time, maybe if you're in school and you have to give a 10 minute speech, but you only have, you feel like you only have about five minutes worth of material, if you speak more slowly and pace yourself out, and make yourself feel more grounded and confident as you speak. You can fill 10 minutes with five minutes worth of material. It's just all about your pacing and the way that you're talking. Just make sure you have quality material so that when you speak slowly, people don't get restless. If people are getting restless through your slow speaking, it's probably because your material is trash. It's not because you're too slow. If you have good material, listen, you can stretch a two minute story out for 20 minutes as long as the material is good and you understand how to use your time, understand how to use your pauses and your breaks. So that's how you disrupt the possibility of appearing nervous, afraid, or unbalanced because if you appear that way then your audience is not going to respect you. Slowing down. When you take your time, you're demanding more for your audience and they will give it to you, which will confirm that you're worth it because they gave it to you. That's their confirmation. So it works in a cycle. You take an hour of somebody's time, that means you must be worth an hour of somebody's time. And they, may, they, they don't even know it, but that's the way it works. Point number four. Today's topic is how to get better at public speaking. The fourth thing you can do, know your stuff, know your material. I wouldn't speak as confidently about a topic if I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. The co topics that I talk about on this show, I want you to know I pick and choose my topics based on things that I know what I'm talking about. I don't speak about topics where I don't know what I'm talking about. I wouldn't sound very confident. It would not be very compelling. I would not have good material for you and you will probably stop listening to the show. I take notes for this masterclass. So when I'm talking to you here on this mic, I have notes of the things that I'm gonna talk about, but most of the things that I say are improvising off the top of my head. The notes are just telling me, all right, I know what point number one is gonna be this, point number two is gonna be this, point number three is gonna be this, and the rest of it, pretty much I'm just filling in the blanks off of what's already in my mind. Because I'm not telling you that to impress you, but to tell you, that's because I already know my topic. Again, I chose a topic that I know. I chose a topic that I had some information on, I had some experience in, I had some stories that I could tell, I had some anecdotes that I could share. I'm interested in the topic. I have things to say about it. I know the point that I wanna get across. I know the general idea I wanna get across aside from what the points are, point one, two, three, four. And all of that combined, combined with my confidence, combined with my pacing, combined with my tone, combined with uh, the credibility that I have in the mind and the eyes of my audience, all of that makes my speech compelling. It's a combination of all of that. A good attorney, for example, or a good politician, a good actor, they all know their material really well before they present it to the public. Can we agree? An attorney spends way more time in an office preparing briefs and getting all their I's dotted and T's crossed than they spend in the courtroom arguing like you no know, Matlock or Law and Order or Johnny Cochran. All right, most of the time a lawyer spends is in an office preparing paperwork. It is not in a courtroom you know, doing you no know, all TV, despite what some people may think. But that's why they seem so polished when they do speak. A politician, same thing. 
they have their speeches prepared. Maybe they have a speech writer, maybe they are the one doing the speech writing, but they are very prepared. So when they speak, everything sounds polished and perfect. It's very rarely do you see a politician make a verbal flub when they're talking. You ever see that? It's very rare that we see that. Why? Because they have so much damn practice and they know, they know their damn material, actors and actresses. Now, of course, they have takes and outtakes and they can reshoot and edit, but they know their material before they show up to shooting because otherwise, how are they gonna record? They can't. They all know their material up front. That pre-public work that attorneys, actors, and politicians do to know their stuff, that's what makes it look so easy when it is performed. And I told you what you should expect, what you should expect people to expect of you when the word professional is next to your name in masterclass number 931. Attorneys, politicians, and actors are professionals. There are certain expectations that comes with their job title. They know that, and that's why they do the preparation work ahead of time, and that's why they make it look easy. You need to be doing the same thing. Point number five, today's topic is how to get better at public speaking. This is the last point. Pick a topic that you care about. You want to speak about something in public, speak about something that you actually have something to say about, something where you actually have a point. What's the little girl's name from Europe who's uh, talking about climate change? Greta, Greta Thunberg, I believe her name is. Young kid, she's about 14, 15 years old, and she was giving this speech. I don't know where she was giving this speech at. Don't know that much about her. I just saw her name, and I saw her on the cover of a magazine, and she was giving this speech about climate change, and now, I don't know who she was wagging her finger at, but she was wagging her finger at somebody. One thing I'll tell you about Greta Thunberg, if that, has, I think that's her right now. I know her first name is Greta, is that she cares about her topic. Now, whether she has the right information or not, I am not making that argument. Whether uh, she is, her arguments are backed by actual science or they're not, I'm not making that argument. It's funny thing these days, how many people are arguing about whether somebody has the right science or the wrong. I thought science was like objective, but I guess it is not. Again, different topic for a different day. The whole point is that little girl cares about the topic that she's talking about. You need to feel the same way. Whatever your topic is going to be, make sure you care about it. This is a must when you are speaking in public. You must care about the topic of which you speak. Passion sells, ladies and gentlemen. Skills matter, preparation matters, all those things matter. Passion matters as well. It sells when you're trying to influence another person. People make decisions based on emotion. They, they legitimize those decisions through logic, but they, their first decision is through their emotion and your passion speaks to people's emotions. It bypasses the logic. 90% of communication, ladies and gentlemen, is body language and tonality, not words. We read people and size them up before they say something, and how they say things matters a lot more than what they actually say. So it is said that selling is but a transfer of emotion, right? So what I've said before is also that we are all salespeople. So when you care about a topic, all you're doing is taking your emotional feelings about that topic and you are transferring it to another person. And if you do that successfully, because you care about the topic, you will be a successful salesperson. When you care about your topic, other people will care about it too. Or even if they don't care, they will at least pay you enough respect to give you attention just from your energy. Just your energy alone will get them to pay attention. Now, I don't know a lot about climate change. I do not pay a lot of attention to that conversation. But one thing I do know is who that girl Greta is because she was so passionate in the way she was speaking about it. I don't even remember the exact words that she was saying, but just looking at her body language and her energy when she was talking, it got a lot of people's attention. That's the exact point that I'm making. She sold herself as someone to be listened to on this topic because of her passion and energy, not necessarily because of her knowledge and information. Again, not saying that she doesn't have any, but that's not the thing that made herself because she wasn't the only nor the first person saying the things that she's saying. And she won't be the last, but her passion and energy is what got her you know, pushed to the front of the line, so to speak. When you care about your topic, you will get other people's attention. When you don't care, you might as well be talking to a wall because that's the exact response that you're going to get. Let's recap today's class, which is how to get better at public speaking. Point number or public speaking before I even get into that it is a universally needed skill that will improve anyone's future prospects because it is basic communication. In anything you do in life, you need a skill of communication. The more skilled communicator you are, your skill of communication can overcome a lack of skill technically in actually doing whatever the thing happens to be, believe it or not, in some areas. Point number one, you gotta speak. Talk to your phone camera, your selfie camera, use IG stories, have conversations, do live streams, start a podcast just for yourself. To get better at speaking, you need practice. You gotta be comfortable with your own voice. You gotta get your 10,000 hours in of actual speaking, and you can do this every single day through social media. Point number two, 
tactic to help you out, read out loud. This is great because you get to practice speaking, you learn grammar, you learn sentence structure. So pick your favorite book, read it out loud in private. You will become a better speaker, a better reader, and it will boost your confidence. And you get the, the, the vision of reading really well-written stuff will help you become a better writer and a better speaker as well. Point number three, slow down. As humans, we tend to rush through saying things when we are either nervous, afraid, unbalanced, or just overall excited. So you disrupt that possibility by slowing down. It makes you more steady, more grounded, which will cause you to take more of the audience's time, which they will happily give to you as long as you continue to occupy it. I've never heard an audience complain about somebody speaking too slowly, but I have heard audiences complain about pe people speaking too quickly because they cannot process what you are saying when you talk too fast, especially a live type of event where people are not going to consume the recording or rewind it as you can do with something like this. Point number four, know your stuff. I would not speak confidently about a topic if I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I take notes for this masterclass, but most of what I say is off the top of my head, aided by notes. Not to, I'm not telling you that to impress you, but to let you know, I know my topic so well. I'm interested in it. I have things to say. I have a point that I want to get across. All of that makes my speech compelling. It is not necessarily the words themselves. Good attorneys, good politicians, good actors, they all know their material well before they present themselves to the public. Like I talked about in Masterclass number 931, that's why they are professionals. Point number three, point number five rather, pick a topic you care about. This is a must when you are speaking in public. Speak on what you know, what you care about because passion sells. 90% of communication is nonverbal through your body language and your tonality. We read people and size them up before they speak and how they speak matters a lot more than what they actually speak. So what it said, the selling is a transfer of emotion and everybody's a salesperson. So if you want to be good at influencing other people, what you need to get good at is taking your belief and your feelings about whatever topic, whether it's yourself or something else, and transferring that energy to another person. What you say does not matter as much as how you say it and how you look, how you hold your body as you are actually saying it. That is what sells to other people. It is not the actual words. When you care about your topic, other people will care too, or at the very worst, they will at least give you the respect of letting you say what you gotta say. When you don't care about your topic, that will show through and people will be, it, you might as well be talking to a wall because that's, that's the exact response people are going to give you. Work on your game. Dre, all day.